This is a Freja production. Freja. Uh, uh, about that. Freja was a goddess. A nice, beautiful Nordic goddess, as you can see. With a sword. If you can't lay them, slay them. That's the motto. The motto of, Nor of Nordic mythology, Nordic beliefs, is if you can't have sex with them, slay them. Get rid of them, butcher them, murder them, dispose of them. They're disposable, in other words, in a way. I was pretty graphic, pretty nasty, but that was their attitude back then. Anyways, I got a hat. I'm not going to be hatless. This hat is known as the Cocopelli hat. I call it the Arizona Cocopelli hat. I also like to put reference to Mexico on this hat too. Anyways, hat on, get an idea what it looks like. Sorry about that, folks, trying to bear. That's up my here too. I forgot to show. Little reference to Coco Pelli. Oh, Coco Pelli. Anyways, Coco Pelli. I wore a Coco Pelli hat because Coco Pelli was also a god. A trickster god, actually, but not. He was uh, worshipped and celebrated by uh, the the Native Americans in Arizona, as well as in the Four Corners region, and also Four Corners states. Coquipelli was also worshipped in Nevada, in California, Arizona, Utah, Colorado. Darn lights. Maybe Coquipelli's not too happy I'm doing this video. I don't know. Coquipelli was a trickster god who played the flute, a musical instrument that supposedly was so seductive in the music and so sexual that people were drawn to the music. But when they got drawn by was something very downright, tied up in a some in a downright wicked way. Coca-Cola would draw up with his music and then emasculate them or find some way to get rid of them. In other words, kill, butcher, slay. But coca Pelli ended up becoming more of a friendlier god as time developed. The Pima, the Pima tribes, the Hopi, the Diné, they don't call themselves Navajo. That's a Spanish word that really means thief. Because the Spanish call these people thieves because they supposedly stole stuff from the Spanish. When it was actually quite the opposite way. The Spanish stole from the Diné. Also known as the Nabijo. Nabihu. That's it. Nabihu. The Nabihu. Also known as Diné. Were falsely accused and falsely called Navajo. The word Navajo is not the correct word for these people that live on the reservation in Arizona, which is really downright diabolical, evil, and wrong. Putting people on reservations is wicked. It's cruelty, it's an injustice, and of course the government supposedly feels like, well, hey, we gave them casinos, they get all this money with the casinos now. They're making lots of money, they get free education because of their background. But it doesn't hide the fact what the government did was systematic cultural genocide. They wouldn't allow these people to speak their language, and when they did, they tortured them to death, even butchered them. There are mass graves in the southwest of Native American people, done by the American government, folks, the American military, back then, during the, during the Civil War, War of Independence. I'd say probably all the way up to the 20th, 20th, 20th century and beyond. 
has been nothing but a systematic cultural genocide towards the indigenous population of this country. And it saddens me to say that, but it's the truth. A trail of tears was a real thing that really did happen. Uh, also the fact that there are mass graves have been found of Native American peoples throughout the United States, including the Southwest. I've always admired and inspired. I personally am inspired and an inspiration in me, these darn lights. Who thought of this stuff? Oh, jeez. Anyways, as I was saying, that the indigenous, pop the indigenous population of this country has got through the worst treatment of hell on earth. They've gone through a holocaust. Literally a lot worse, than I would say, than the, than the Jewish holocaust during World War II. Of course, the Jewish holocaust was more drastic and more, even more diabolical than the fact that they forced Jewish people to burn other Jewish people inside the crematorium. So I okay, more I think more wickedness can ever get. That's truly just downright wicked and diabolical. So we look at the day of the American people, it was a holocaust here too. That darn Columbus. And also oh what's that guy, uh not Eric the Red. Oh well, Leif Erickson. Oh he butchered people too. He wasn't too nice. They say, well, he didn't kill anybody. Well, that's not true. The Scandinavian peoples, when they came to the New World, were just as violent, just as graphic as Columbus and people that came later on to the New World, or if you would say right now, America, the United States. But Christopher Columbus called these people a word that's completely in erroneous, wrong, downright, just diabolically bad. And calling these people Indians is an insult to the people who really live in India, who are Indians. But the reason why Christopher Columbus said these words, because he felt since he went to a place called the West Indies, which isn't America, folks, the West Indies isn't America at all. So he never landed in the United States. He landed in the West Indies. And he called the people of West the people of West uh, that lived there Indians. But the people of West Indies didn't call themselves Indian. So here he's using words about people not even true. He's a liar, he's a murderer, he's a, he's a, he brought sexual diseases over here. I mean, people were laying waste. More people with more indigenous populations in this country died from sexually transmitted diseases and flus and colds. And also the white man's disease, like smallpox, chickenpox, the common cold, the flu, really wiped out t villages of Native Americans. Wiped them out, wiped them out. These darn lights are getting strange again. Anyways, back on what I was trying to say before. Sorry about the sad history, folks, but let's get realistic. We got to be honest. I want to be honest about the history of this country and lie about it. You know, I can hear the politically correct version of, a, of, a, of American history here, folks. I'm not trying to be in any way scare anybody or hurt anybody or offend anybody. But well, let's just tell the truth as it is. If yeah, this country would just marry darn lights again. Anyways. Sorry folks for the lights. I don't know what it is, but anyways, um Nicole Capelli was a god. He later on became emasculated. He used to have a phallus symbol. And notice you don't see a phallus symbol. There's no nothing between the legs. Well, the original Coco Pelli did have his member, a sexual organ, you may want to call it, or his, I could just say the word, but I wouldn't be offending anybody, his penis. I guess I could say sex organ. It just sounds more nicer, not, not so graphic or sexual in any way. I, I'd rather say sex organ. It's sex organ that was taken away. Now why they emasculated Coco Pelli, I don't know folks, why they did that. I got something America did, the white man did in the state. Because all the original indigenous depictions 
of art and statues that were made by the indigenous population of Arizona and the Southwest all had phallus symbols on coca belly. So this, folks, is really a white man's version. The original version would have something right there, you know, but you don't see anything. The only reason why is because they didn't like the fact that this was a sexual god. Cocopelli was a sexual god that was worshipped by the Pima, the Nath, the Dene, known as the Nabihu, and the Hopi. And also various other tribes that were living in the Four Corners region and the Southwest. The reason why I'm wearing Freja is because she's the goddess of the North. Freja was a goddess that was also about fertility, uh, Cocopelli is. And she basically had a lot to do with war, violence, uh, sexual activity. She was a goddess of creativity, of the arts, music. She, brought, she was, a, she was a Odin's wife. He actually had more than one wife, folks. Odin was actually a man of, of, of many wives. But we know that he, for, for a certain he had two wives. Frigga. Frigg and Freja. Some will say, well, Frigg and Freja are the same person, the same being. Not true. Frigg and Freja were two women that were married to and had sexual relations with Odin. That's why Thor is a son of Odin. Because of Frigg. There's no evidence that Freja gave birth to Thor, but Frigg probably did. Most likely did. Anyways, folks, sorry about the lighting about this stuff, but history lesson. I call this the Coco Pelli hat, or the Arizona hat, or the Mexico hat. And even the Mexican people, believe it or not, they worship Coco Pelli. The Aztecs, the Mayans, the Toltecs, the Olmecs, the tribal peoples of South America, of Mexico, they worship Coco Pelli as one of the gods that they worship. There's even pyramids dedicated to Coco Pelli in Mexico. And Mexico City. So when you think the word Mexico, think Cocopelli. When you think uh, Navo, the Diné, the Nabihu, people call it the Navajo, unfortunately, the Hopi, the Pima, think about Cocopelli. And when you think about Scandinavia and fertility rights, think about Frasia. If you can't lay them, Slay them. It seems like an awful motto, but it works. <laughs>